and uh, let me also convey my deepest appreciation to the yeah. Journalists and Writers uh, uh, Foundation for inviting me to this conference. I remember very distinctly that uh, I was there exactly about six years ago, if my memory serves me correctly, it was the 25th of uh, September in uh, 2015. And on that occasion, I had the opportunity also of meeting uh, uh, Dr. Mehmet Kilic in uh, person. So I'm delighted uh, to see him again today, although now in the virtual format, but uh, still it's uh, good to see him and uh, good also to know what uh, an important and very useful work that he's doing. Uh, I'm delighted to have been included in this company of uh, very eminent uh, panelists, and I congratulate them for the very important and useful presentations and also our keynote speakers of today. Let me also add my words of gratitude and appreciation to the In Dialogue Foundation, which is the sister organization of the Journalists and Writers Foundation, which is doing exemplary and extremely useful work uh, in India. Uh, I'm to speak on the uh, role of peace and security in uh, facilitating global partnerships. Of course, we've heard a great deal about global partnerships uh, today. Uh, but I think uh, if we look at uh, the situation we are in today and where we have been for the last more than uh, one and a half years, I think it is uh, very truly said that life is uncertain, but that is uh, more of a philosophical statement. Uh, but the fact that uncertainties have uh, proliferated in uh, recent years uh, due to the COVID-19 pandemic is, of course, evident to all of us. It might have started as uh, a black swan event, but the impact and repercussions have been huge and uh, will, of course, continue to be felt for a long time to come. It is because of the pandemic that we are forced to conduct uh, this uh, particular conference through the virtual format. Although I dare say that, you know, having lived in this virtual world for the last more than one and a half years, we also recognize some of the advantages. I think some of the advantages that have taken place as far as uh, the climate is concerned, because uh, where I'm speaking from, uh, that is uh, India, New Delhi, there have been uh, problems of uh, pollution, particularly in winter months when uh, the temperatures are low and uh, the wind speeds are not very high. But uh, these days uh, we get up in the mornings and we put on the air quality index and it is, uh, most of the time it is 24, 36, 42. So the uh, climate has become uh, much cleaner, much better. And uh, I think as we can see today here in this conference only, we are able to connect and touch base with uh, people from all over the world, whether it is uh, you know, our first two keynote speakers, one from Brazil, the other from Australia. And uh, in the chat box, we see people are from uh, Nigeria, from Panama, from all over the world. And I think this is uh, an advantage that uh, without uh, traveling, without uh, really using all the fossil fuels for uh, going from one place to the other, we can still uh, be in touch and we can still be connected, stay connected to each other. So I do sincerely hope that when we get out of uh, COVID-19, which hopefully should be soon, we will not uh, give up and we shall not forget the advantages and benefits also, the so-called advantages and benefits of uh, COVID-19. But uh, this is uh, the pandemic, of course, uh, we realize has had very many adverse uh, repercussions and implications. It has resulted in millions of deaths around the world. It has impacted the health of millions of others, uh, destroyed the economies of all nations. The world itself, the economy has come down uh, very drastically and has adversely impact, uh, impacted upon the living standards of people, particularly those who are not uh, well-to-do. Uh, wiped out uh, many industries, particularly, uh, as I was mentioning, air travel, tourism, hospitality, changed the whole nature of education, forcing uh, children from school and uh, 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 from uh, schools and students from colleges and universities 
to study from home. Uh, they have forced offices to shut down and compelled people to operate from uh, home. And uh, there seems to be no end to this misery and uncertainty in sight. Just when we think that we are through with it, another more deadly uh, mutant surfaces and another wave uh, comes knocking. It is the same story everywhere. Even the developed and more advanced countries have not been spared. In fact, they are some of the worst hit. Uh, we've seen West Europe, United States, and uh, the Journalist and uh, Writers Foundation is based there. I understand there are more than 140,000 cases a day and positive cases a day and more than 2,000 deaths a day. So all countries have been bruised and damaged badly. So how do we go forward? I mean, this has really brought uh, our march towards achievement of the SDGs uh, uh, by 2030, by several years. So the, uh, what uh, we have found in our country, of course, in terms of partnership uh, between government, between civil society, between private sector, academia, think tanks, is the age old philosophy, Indian philosophy of Vasudhev Kutumbakam, which really means that the whole world is a family. And if the whole world is a family, then all of us have really got to work together to deal with uh, the adversities that each and every one of uh, us are facing. Let me just uh, very quickly, because I know that the time is limited and uh, we should have ended our uh, session even after the question answer session at 9.30 India time evening, but uh, we are already at 9.30 and uh, I'll just take a few minutes more. I think if you look at the issue of health, because that has been at the forefront of the challenge that uh, the, uh, uh, all the countries have faced, particularly with COVID-19 and all the other related uh, ailments. So in India, we have found that uh, the vaccines uh, uh, that have, uh, we have uh, uh, got, uh, we have manufactured our own vaccines. We have also manufactured the AstraZeneca vaccine and there are many other vaccines Indian uh, discovered uh, uh, vaccines on the, uh, in the pipeline, all those are being provided free of cost to the people. And uh, there have been absolutely phenomenal, uh, initially there was some vaccine hesitancy, but of late we have been able to uh, vaccinate a, a large number of people. Today, if I were to look at it, in terms of uh, the population of India is 1.35 billion. So we have been able to administer more than 840 million doses. Now I think each one of us in our respective countries can really measure uh, what uh, this uh, uh, really signifies. In one of the days, uh, just a few days ago, we were able to vaccinate uh, 25 million people in one day. We have more than 22% of our huge population which has been vaccinated uh, with both doses and more than 60% of our population which has received a single dose. By the end of the year, we hope to vaccinate uh, most of our eligible adult population and the vaccination of children is also going to start uh, from October. So this has been achieved uh, by the government acting in collaboration with the industry, with the business, and also with the civil society. In the area of poverty amelioration and reduction, we have found that it is the migrant labor which has really suffered the greatest. Those who were uh, uh, from the unorganized sector who are working in uh, the uh, in uh, cities and uh, uh, townships, uh, they lost all their jobs. They had to go back to their homes and villages. And here the civil society again came forward and uh, it has provided 800 uh, uh, food and grains uh, and uh, uh, other facilities to 800 million people uh, for about eight months uh, last year and for about eight months uh, this year. In the area of education also, we have a 
uh, corporate requirement that 2% of the profits of large companies would be devoted towards the CSR, the corporate social responsibility. And uh, that is where it has uh, been put in the area of uh, education and infrastructure. In the area of climate change also, the uh, government and the uh, private sector, as well as civil society organizations have moved uh, very fast uh, in terms of uh, both uh, promoting uh, energy efficiency as also in terms of uh, ensuring uh, larger production of renewable energy. Similar is the case with water. The last point that I would like to mention is about uh, COVID-19 in terms of vaccines, because uh, what uh, our prime minister had mentioned at the 75th anniversary of the celebration of the United Nations last year was that India's capacity and capability in manufacturing vaccines would be used not only for the benefit of its own people, but for the benefit of whole humanity. As I said, Vasudev Kutumbukam, the whole world is a family. So India supplied more than uh, 66 million vaccines to more than 90 countries and supplied uh, uh, medicines because India is uh, the uh, hub, it is the center, global center of uh, medicine manufacture to uh, more than 150 countries. And now as uh, our supplies and production of vaccines is increasing, has increased very significantly, from October, we will again start uh, providing vaccines to the whole world. Uh, in all these global partnerships that we have, uh, that we undertake, role of peace and security is absolutely critical and crucial. Because even within a country, if there is no peace, there is no stability, no security, there can be no focus on uh, promoting the SDGs. There can be no uh, focus on facilitating global partnerships for promoting SDs, uh, SDGs. So even within countries and uh, uh, relations amongst countries, there has to be peace, there has to be stability, there has to be security. And this poses particular challenges for all of us today, whether we see in the area of uh, South Asia, what we see happening in uh, Afghanistan, where there is a uh, new dispensation that has appeared and that has been able to capture power through military force and violence and all the people in that dispensation are some of the most uh, wanted uh, uh, and violent uh, terrorists and uh, feature on uh, the UN designated list of terrorists. Or we look at uh, some places in Southeast Asia or in Africa there is uh, uh, violence, there is a uh, conflict. And I think it is absolutely essential to deal with this if we are to bring all countries to move forward in the area of attainment of SDGs. As I said, COVID-19 has really hit us badly, bruised the global uh, community badly, taken us many years, <clears throat> sorry, backward, but uh, I think while working on the economies of all the countries, we need also to ensure that there is uh, peace and uh, security and stability. And in that context, multilateral institutions have to play a very important role. Let me finish here because I know that uh, time is uh, running out and I stand ready to uh, respond to any questions or any comments. Uh, or any clarifications, uh, but at the end, I would like to thank uh, the Journalists and Workers Foundation, particularly Dr. Mehmet Kilic, once again, and thank you, Madam Chair, for so effectively and efficiently chairing this session. Thank you, I wish you good health, happiness, and peace. <music>